Hi everyone, I'm Kate Berkner here today with Dr. Tom Phelan, author and creator of 123 Magic, as well as the Manager Mom Epidemic. Dr. Phelan, welcome. Hi Kate, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good. So today we are going to talk about talking to your kids about 123 Magic. And yes, if you're going to use the program, you do need to talk to your kids about it rather than just going. So um, before we jump into how to introduce this to your kids, I, I have a couple of questions on behalf of parents um, who might be wondering if this is going to work for them. Can you just remind us what ages the One Two Three Magic program will work for? It's about uh, two to twelve, uh, approximately. So, if you have eighteen-month-old children, you can use it actually with kids that are eighteen months old. Uh, even though they can't say too many words, they can still understand the basic process. Uh, and on the other end, um, we don't start it with teenagers. So if you have kids that are, you know, really 12 or over, you're probably not going to want to start it for the first time. If you've been doing it uh, with kids uh, pre-adolescent, then you can continue doing it through adolescence. Uh, you want to do it a little bit differently. But uh, so basically, it's about 18 months you can start. And, um, you know, on up to, uh, you know, the tweens years, 11 or 12. Okay, terrific. And w once I've decided that I'm going to introduce 123 Magic into my household, about how long will it take before, before it starts working, before I start seeing results? Well, here we get a, a bit of a range. And the, on the uh, uh, good end, <clears throat> we have parents who will get things shaped up in about three hours or almost immediately. Uh, and I know that sounds, sounds kind of funny, but that's where we got the title where people said, I can't believe it, it works like magic. And that really has a lot to do with counting. Uh, so they're doing the counting and the kids will shape up within three hours. And then those parents, I mean, you, you don't want to stop there. You got two other jobs. Uh, one, another job is positive behavior, you know, bedtime, homework, eating, getting up and out. So th those you don't use counting for. So you might want to remember to do those. And then the bonding, job as well. Uh, now, so that's the good news. Uh, the bad news is there are some kids that will put their parents through what we call hell week. Uh, and that means seven to 10 days of um, really, you know, making believers out of them. The parents have to be religious about the no talking, no emotion rules. Uh, they know have to, they have to know the answers to all the questions in chapter six about what if this happens, what if that happens, what, what if this, and so on. But if the parents stick with it and the parents are really committed and the parents remain calm and decisive, uh, they'll go, get through that initial testing period and you'll see the kids uh, uh, shaping up after about a week or so. Yeah, I mean, even, even if that's the, the high end of the range, it feels like a week of struggle is probably worth having a calmer, happier, happier easier discipline program at home, for sure. It really is. It's uh, like, like don't, don't give up the ship, you know, stick, stick with it. And, uh, and of course, if, if I'm working with those parents, which I have in the past, it's also nicer if they have a little moral support from somebody. Yeah, for sure. It's, I, it almost reminds me of like potty training. Like it's really, really miserable for a very short period of time. And then everything is much better for the most part. So <laughs> yeah, that's a good, good uh, analogy. Um, you know, you mentioned some kids will, will make this a little bit harder. Are there any kids that this program won't work for? Uh, number one, the, the kids really have to have a mental age of uh, about two. So if you have, uh, say, a child was under 18 months of age or so on, or you have a child on the spectrum, you know, and their mental age is not two. Uh, but if they're you know, ages two or more, you can usually use it for them. And then, as I mentioned before, if you have kids who are teens, we're not going to start the program with a 15-year-old. So if you have kids that are in the teenage years, uh, uh, you're not going to start it at that time. Got it. Okay, terrific. All right, well, let's go ahead and jump into it then. How do I talk to my, I've decided we're going to start doing one, two, three magic in my house. I want this to be easier. How do I talk to my kids about that? <laughs> okay, first thing you wanna do is you wanna know the program. And what that means is you want to have either read the book, or watched the DVD or whatever. So you understand the program and you know exactly what you're doing. Uh, kids will pick up that um, uh, sense of confidence from you. If you know what you're doing and you're committed to it, they'll pick that up and that is worth gold. 
if, if they sense that you know what you're doing and this is what they are going to be doing, then they will be much more cooperative uh, with it. And if there's two of you at home, you have a husband, partner, whatever, you want to make sure that you're both on the same uh, page with the program. Uh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, so that's a good question. What if, what if one parent is like super on board? I've read the whole book. I'm ready to go. And the other parents not there yet. <laughs> right. Well, guess which parents those will be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I might be biased being the mom, but my guess yeah. is that largely because mom ends up being the primary caregiver for the kids a lot of the time, per stats you cite in the manager mom book, that that maybe mom is the one who has actively sought out this program and perhaps dad isn't quite there yet. Yeah, and it's not maybe, it's about 95% of the time. <laughs> we have a seminar coming up tomorrow and there are over 100 people registered. I was looking at the list, 95% of them are uh, women. But that's the way it usually is. It's usually about 75, 80%. So anyway, the question is, if, if you have a mom who's read the book or whatever and she wants to get dad involved, the first thing is to see if dad will read the book or both of you read it together. Uh, second thing is you can do a date night thing and watch the video. So you, you, watch the, you watch the video and then you go out to dinner together and discuss how you're gonna implement the program at home. If mom is committed to the program and dad hasn't done anything, uh, what I suggest to moms, because this is one of the most common questions I get, what I suggest to moms is that uh, they ask dad to watch the, uh, the DVD uh, <clears throat> and, um, but the, the requirement is they can't be in the room with him uh, while he's watching the DVD because they have a tendency to say, see, now this is what you need to do, see, and they'll irritate him and he won't do anything. <laughs> so and that, that works, that works. So those are kind of the tricks that we use to get the dads involved, but it's very important to have them involved. Okay, great. All right, so now okay. we have both parents on the same page. And yeah. we're, we've read the book, we understand what the program is, we're really clear on everything in chapter six, which is sort of the if-thens. Um, so now what? So now we're gonna sit the kids down and um, um, we're gonna have the kickoff conversation. The kickoff conversation is the shortest chapter in the book. This should take about five to 10 minutes and you tell the kids, uh, we're gonna be doing some things, you know, sometimes uh, we get a little frustrated if you guys aren't doing what we'd like you to do. We're gonna do things differently around here. And you explain the uh, counting procedure uh, to them. And you say, you know, there's some of this you're gonna like and some you're not gonna like. And they'll say, what are we gonna like? What you're gonna like is that when you come out of your break time or rest period, we don't talk about it anymore unless it's new, unusual, or dangerous. Uh, and then they say, what are we not going to like? And say, what you're not going to like is if you do something that's like real bad to start with, like you hit somebody or use a real bad swear or something like that, uh, you're going straight to the break time or to the rest period. Um, and then you stop and you look at them and you say, do you have any questions? And sometimes the kids will kind of poke each other like, I, I think mom went to the library again, you know, and got one of these books on how to raise us guys. Last time she only stuck with it for four days. If we hang tough and stick together, we can be running this house again inside of a week. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, it, the kickoff conversation won't make believers out of them. Uh, it'll help, but it won't make believers out of them. So uh, you expect some skepticism from the children. And then you say, well, here we go. And, uh, and then I suggest you rehearse it uh, with them. So the second part of the kickoff re is rehearsing it. And it's, it, rehearsal is fun. I mean, it, sometimes it's hilarious. You can do it with stuffed animals. You can have dad count mom. Dad, dad pretends he's acting up. Mom counts dad. Dad grumpily goes off to the room, you know, for the rest period or whatever. The kids laugh. That they won't laugh when you're counting them. Um, but the, the rehearsal gives them a, a feel for it. Uh, and then you, you start. Okay, great. So now in talking about a kickoff conversation, you said at the beginning of our time here, you can use this with kids as young as two or even 18 months. Can you have a kickoff conversation with a toddler? That feels like a, it feels almost very comedic to kind of sit your, your very little one down and say, okay, now. <laughs> yeah. It'll be comedic, I'll guarantee you that. <laughs> yes, you, you can do it. And you can do, remember I mentioned the uh, mom counts dad, mm -hmm. something like that. You can do the stuffed animals. 
you can have the little boy or girl count the stuffed animal and so on. And, and they'll, they'll start to get a feel for it. Uh, with the 18 month and the two year olds and stuff, it sometimes takes them a week or so to get a, a feel for the counting. Um, but remember, it's, it's very, very gentle and it's very, very clear, you know, and you can explain that no hitting, hitting hurts people, that's one, you know, uh, and that kind of thing. So um, you, 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 you more do a sort of a visualization of it with the little ones, the 18 month olds, the two year olds, the toddlers and things like that. And, and it'll, it'll help them get started. <laughs> I feel like like I might need to rehearse the rehearsal first so that I don't start laughing during it. <laughs> well, you you know if you I mean it's it's it is funny so uh, if you laugh that's okay just don't laugh all the time. <laughs> right, fair, good point. <laughs> um, okay, terrific. So we understand which kids that we can use this with, which is many of them, pretty much everyone, um, and how to have that kickoff conversation and also how to get how to get dad involved. Um, what is the kind of the one most important thing that you would tell parents about starting the program? Uh, the, well, first, after, you know, know what you're doing, uh, the, the next most important things are going to be the no talking and no emotion rules. Uh, we just have, uh, we parents have just such a, a natural tendency to yak, chatter, prattle, babble, nag, you know, <laughs> all this stuff. You got to stop doing that. Uh, so if you do a count, you say that's one there's silence after the count. It's not, that's one, come on now, I'm getting sick and tired of this. Uh, look at me when I'm talking to you. Did God put you on earth to drive me crazy or what? Uh, that's not what you want to do. And some parents need to uh, actually uh, record themselves for a while uh, because they're yakking too much. And, and some people talk and they don't even know they're talking. Uh, and so on. So it's, it's, that's the toughest part is the get rid of the extra talking. And if the kid wants to go to three, let them go to three. You don't do two, two and a half, two and three quarters, two and seven eighths, you know, and that kind of thing when you're doing the uh, counting. Yeah. Okay. Terrific. So know what you're doing. Uh, make sure that you've, that you've read the book and you understand the program. I think that's probably, um, one of the most helpful things as far as not talking, right? Because the talking is sort of like our automatic ingrained response. Yeah. Whereas if you have a plan and you understand how to work the plan, then you're less likely to sort of just let words fall out of your mouth. <laughs> yes, that's exactly true. You know what you're doing, you know why you're stopping the talking, uh, and you know what it takes to stop the talking. Uh, and it takes, some, uh, takes a lot of practice. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Phelan. If you know someone who needs to hear this, please feel free to share the video or tag them in the comments. You can sign up for our newsletter at 123magic.com. We'll be sharing more parenting resources and tips around this topic in tomorrow's newsletter and other topics going forward. I will also link in the comments to the seminar that Dr. Phelan mentioned we are having tomorrow that is a free seminar and there is still time to register. Thank you so much. <laughs>